subscribe to our youtube channel for in-depth interviews of india inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hiral Dadia. We have with us Sanjay Kapoor, entrepreneur and advisor and former CEO of India South Asia Bharti Airtel joining us on the show. Uh, Sanjay, welcome to the show. Pleasure to have you and to speak to you as well after a really long time. I hope everyone's safe at home and at work with all colleagues. Thank you for asking. Yes, uh, so far, so good. Thank you. Sanjay, let me come with my first question. Clearly, if you go to see COVID, the moment it came in, unprecedented times, no sector was left untouched, uh, no economy was left untouched. However, if you see in terms of telecom, the fear earlier was that how will the demand be created because there was enough supply. Now, if we see the impact from March to now, this, it, it gives you a sign that telecom has been a sector which has clearly seen good demand growth, taking into consideration uh, work from home. So data connectivity, et cetera, has been the driving force. How would you actually describe the impact and the entire timeline from March to now for the sector? I think uh, uh, you are probably uh, guessing it rightly uh, that the pandemic has really um, elevated telecom uh, to be on a pole position as far as uh, customer sympathy is concerned and the utility of the services are concerned. I think it has gone much beyond just uh, voice and message connectivity or data surfing to actually enable us uh, to bridge uh, the difficulties that arose during the pandemic. Uh, this industry has really supported everybody across the world on uh, education, on being informed uh, about the disease, uh, about uh, keeping connected with each other, working from anywhere, uh, and above all, entertaining families who were confined to indoors for a very large part of the pandemic. So I think uh, the industry, if you are associated with the industry, you definitely feel proud of what this industry did to everybody. And uh, uh, of course, not without difficulties. Uh, the networks that are there were never designed for work from anywhere. They were concentrating by and large on commercial districts on uh, places where uh, the customer was traveling and generating revenues for them, but not confined to indoor, uh, uh, you know, everywhere for everybody, you know, but that's something that the industry has to probably correct and invest behind as we move further from pandemic to the normal, because uh, we all know that work from anywhere is there to stay and it is not going to be wished away. So I think this new topography and new management of where the customer is and to provide him an experience there and also to make sure that there's enough bandwidth where you know a child can get educated while he's at home, the family can get entertained, you can be informed, you can surf the net and also do your video conferencing with people not only in the country but all across the world. So I think it's a big challenge, but it's a, a good problem to have for the industry. Right. So Sanjay, would it be right to say that on the back of the pandemic, it's it, we've come to a completely new and different phase uh, for the telecom sector as a whole, which could be on the positive stride? Yes, of course, <clears throat> it's an opportunity. Uh, but don't forget, it's also uh, a very large investment staring at us uh, because if you have to provide that level of bandwidth, capacity, uh, move from outdoors to indoors, and to make sure that you are video grade, because that's what is prevailing now uh, to keep you connected and informed and entertained and educated. Uh, and above all, uh, you know, uh, the low bandwidth technologies like the 2G and 3G will become irrelevant. Therefore, you need to migrate everything to at least a 4G 
and in future 5G requires a huge amount of investment. And given the pricing that prevails in our country, we really pay peanuts for these services compared to rest of the world. And given the price of uh, spectrum uh, in our country, um, probably the equation is imbalanced, you know, and that's a challenge for the industry. Yes, it's an opportunity to garner and deliver more, but it's also uh, a lot of investment that will have to be put together uh, to have a proper customer experience, which keeps you globally competitive. Right. So Andrew, when we talk of investments as well, it's only Geo right now who's garnered the maximum FDI investment. Now, if we exclude Geo, FDI investment in the telecom space in India is almost near an all-time low. What is this then telling you about the future of the telecom industry? Because on one hand, you need the investments to move forward. On one hand, your FDI investments are at all-time low. How does this equation actually fix in then? That definitely can't be a good news uh, for any country. And I think uh, this problem uh, has to be solved and solved comprehensively. So, so look, there is a cost side of the equation and there's a revenue side of the equation. And the equation has to balance. From a cost side perspective, there's a spectrum uh, which costs a bomb in our country and probably one of the most expensive anywhere in the world. And we all know that this is a very spectrum hungry industry and all operators will need more and more. In fact, for 5G, the minimum that an operator will require to give a great experience uh, around a broadband, around low latency, around internet of things is probably a hundred megs. And hundred megs in our country to, could cost you, you know, 50,000 crore rupees. Uh, which is really, uh, you know, a very large sum of money. And then all that is required to back it with backhaul, uh, to have indoor coverage, to have electronics in place, and finally devices. Uh, that's going to cost a lot of money. Therefore, the spectrum, which is the raw material, needs to be internationally comparable because, you know, we are going to be competing with the rest of the world uh, on, on 5G technology and 4G technology. Uh, to stay relevant on, on, on the digitized world. And then uh, comes the government levies. In some form or the other, the industry ends up paying about 30% of their top line to the government. Uh, uh, and therefore, that seems very, very high, again, compared to the rest of the world, because everybody is paying mass market discovered prices uh, for the spectrum. And after that, if you still have to garner so much money to pay, then there's very little left for the industry to plow back into their future growth and keeping uh, the industry contemporary because the technological obsolescence is really increasing. What was good for 10 years in the first era is now good only for five years. We are talking 5G already when we have not fully deployed 4G. And I wouldn't be surprised we'll be talking 6G before we fully deployed 5G. So that's the cost side of it. Now let's come to the a revenue side of it. The revenue side of it is something that uh, the operators have to take care, which is the price. At this price and at these are pools, you cannot sustain your industry. You know, I advise, uh, I also sit on the board of some uh, very large global telecom companies. And, you know, I can tell you that even $30 environments, the third operator is not uh, profitable. You know, he really struggles the market is getting more and more concentrated because of the monies that are required, because of the obsolescence that's there and the demand on customer experience, which has gone up in every single market of the world. And with video, it will only get accentuated. And the form factor of video, when we move from standard definition to high definition to 4K to 16K, it's further going to get concentrated because the fact of the matter is that you need to make money out of what you do and customers are not going to pay you proportionately. But to be paying you 150 rupees a month for consuming 30 GB of data, I think is unheard of. This is unsustainable. So India at least needs to get to an $8, $10 ARPU if India needs to provide a consumer experience that's sustainable. And that can only be possible when prices go up. Uh, is floor pricing the right way to do it? Uh, I'm not too sure because I think prices have been unregulated and they've done well. 
um, operators were profitable. So I think they will find their ways and then the incentive to plow back will, will, will go away because they're earning that fixed amount of money anyway. You know, that's the flow price, whether you give a good service or a bad service. So I'm not a big supporter of that, but I'm saying nevertheless, the equation can only be balanced if the ARPUs and the prices go up. If the customer is not willing to pay today, then he will suffer tomorrow because he's going to get a raw deal on experience mm -hmm. and on technological uh, 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 you know, availability, the latest technology availability. Right. Sanjay, uh, you know, point well taken on this. So, you know, number one on the revenue slide, uh, side, if you're saying floor pricing may, may not be the right way. What, according to you, is the best way for telecom operators to garner this kind of ARPU, number one? And number two, on the cost side as well, when we're talking of these kind of spectrum charges, what is it that the government needs to do as well? Because clearly, with regards to our 5G ambition as well, we will need significant deployment of funds. There will need to be speedy implementation and a seamless regulatory process as well. And only if all of these factors are in place, that's where it will encourage private companies to improve and build their 5G technology. Yes. Um, so let's come down uh, to the revenue side first. Mm. Um, you know, um, at the end of the day, it's become a three-player market. Uh, yes, of course, there's a state incumbent, BSNL, MTNL, who are there. But in my mind today, they are irrelevant, you know, because they don't even have a 4G technology. Government is talking about them coming into 4G. But 4G is not about, uh, you know, just putting in some electronics. It's a whole mindset, you know, and your ability to pull with your brand because of your experience, the right customers onto you. I'm not too sure whether BSNL and MTNL have that relevance today uh, in a youngster's mind or a, or a, or a data-consuming customer's mind. So they have an uphill task if they want to survive. And, you know, I, I don't give them, uh, you know, too much uh, on the odds on that one. That really leaves three players in the market. Mm. And out of which there is one player that has been really struggling uh, to keep his head above the water for a simple reason that he's over leveraged. Uh, he has to pay a lot of money to the government uh, in terms of AGR, mm. um, also the spectrum, deferred spectrum that he has, and there's more spectrum that he will need. He needs to come from behind and invest into 4G to be contemporary and competitive with others. That really leaves two players in the market who are jostling, uh, you know, between, you know, maybe 33, 34% and 37, 38% market shares. And, uh, you know, as I read and as, as, as the numbers have been over the past few months, it seems that market will finally get divided 40, 40, 20, you know, three ways. Um, and maybe BSNL will probably have a small chunk out of that, uh, that 20%. If that is true, then the game can only be changed by those 40% market share guys. The 20% market share guy cannot change the game, mm -hmm. right? And they have to take the game away now. When you are 40-40, they're not going to relent space to each other. And you cannot take uh, the customer away from each other just on price because they have established as two big guys. They know they're playing the market game rightly. So the only way that they can win and sustain versus each other is by offering a better experience. I think the day one of them really says, now I'm going after the experience versus the other guy, then the prices will begin to go up because higher experience, I would be very surprised if a customer is not willing to pay. The reality is that you and I were paying a much higher price for much lesser services, even five years back oh. or even seven or eight years back. We are paying probably one-tenth of that today for data, which is probably a hundred times higher and experience that's probably, you know, a hundred times better. You know, so why? why? Why should that happen? So I think each one of us, because we are so dependent on these services, should be willing to pay for an experience. So I think the game between the top two players, they're the only guys who can raise the prices up in the market and they can go from competing on price to competing on, on experience rather than only coverage and, and, and capacity availability. That's, that's one, you know. Now let's come down to uh, the cost side of it where, where you were talking about the government. I think uh, 
the government straight away on the reserve price uh, needs to come down and be realistic. Um, I I read that you know Airtel already said that they will not bid for 5G at these prices, and we know that uh, uh, Vodafone Idea probably can't bid because of their uh, you know very shallow balance sheet which is there uh, for 5G. You know that will drive them closer to bankruptcy if, if if they do it. So I think they need to keep aware that if Airtel goes out, then who's left? You know, and G also at these prices to invest behind 5G. And 5G is, like I told you, it's not small chunks of spectrum. It's large chunks of spectrum, huge backhaul on fiber, which still needs to be created for the last mile. And then electronics and then in-building because data has moved from outdoors to indoors. That's where we consume data. And the form factor is changing very quickly. So I think given all this, um, uh, you know, the government needs to bring down the reserve price not hold spectrum, put whatever is available on the table so that there's no rationing that drove the prices up for 3G long back. We should not fall into that trap again. A lot of spectrum should be available. And then finally, the government really needs to do something to make sure the spectrum is tradable. It can be shared. Um, Infrastructures can be shared. Uh, The fiber backhauls can be shared. Unbundle the fiber in the country and the right of way is readily available so that all this is, is, is bringing efficiencies to what we are providing. Because I again come back to the fundamental. The fundamental of doing this is to make India more competitive versus rest of the world. Because digitization is a way of competing now with the rest of the world. Physical infrastructure is, is, is lesser relevant than what it was earlier. It's the virtual infrastructure that is now bringing in competitiveness. And finally, bring down the rates and levies and taxation on the industry so that the uh, profits or the returns can be plowed back into creating experience. And I think that w- that's what has to be driven. The government on the other side to make sure they don't make super normal profits and they are plowing back into experience has to up the measurements for all the operators in terms of customer experience and then hold them accountable to say, we need to provide this level of ex- and the rest of the world is doing it. Everywhere, the regulator is upping the game on customer experience mm-hmm. by having stringent measures on availability, on experience. And I think we need to move into that direction. Uh, and if we can do that, um, you know, there still might be hope. Right. And I think, you know, that's where, uh, you know, things need to work up on the cost front as well. So, so right now, if you go to see under the revenue growth trend, between Geo and Airtel seems that it's converging. With this, do you think that if the wireless tariffs don't move up, Vodafone idea will see an accelerated market share erosion to Bharti Airtel and Reliance Geo? And will the revenue growth trend convergence between Geo and uh, uh, Bharti Airtel sustain? Uh. Yes, I mean, uh, given the balance sheets of uh, uh, Geo and Airtel, I think uh, uh, they're not going to fold up. I think they have enough money to sustain. Uh, the question is, do they have enough money to uh, transform uh, the customer experience? And do they have money uh, to offer contemporary technologies to customers at the prevailing price? And that remains a question mark the uh, money that has to come into the industry. Uh, and we have seen even for Geo, ultimately the money has not come from within the country. The money has come from FDI, FDI, right? And FDI is absolutely paramount to grow the virtual infrastructure in our, in our country. And if that is true, then unless the industry is profitable and unless the intra- industry is sustainable, uh, I think uh, it'll be difficult to sustain the industry. And for that, uh, the attractiveness of the industry, of course, we moved away from a you know, hyper competition to now virtually a oligopoly. And you know, that oligopoly, probably two players are sustainable and you know, one is at the brink. But the fact of the matter is that those two have to up the ante on, uh, on experience and sustainability which I think will require a lot of investments. And India, you are rightly saying, I mean, the FDI dipped, 
And we don't want that scenario. We want that FDI should increase in this sector because lot, lot, lot more is required. Mm. And uh, that can only happen when you demonstrate to the world that uh, we are helping ourselves first by paying what is due for the services that we are delivering to the to the marketplace. And I'm, you know, afraid that we are not doing enough of that. There's still a lot of jostling in the market, 1% here and 2% there and 3% here. That's what's happening. I think now Airtel and Geo seem to be at an equilibrium. Airtel is not going to relent anything to Geo uh, for um, a few pennies cheaper. And Geo is not going to relent anything to Airtel uh, for a few pennies cheaper. I think the, the supremacy between the two is going to be determined by the customer experience and not the price going forward. Right. And then with this, you know, when you talk about AGR liabilities as well, the government has given them a 10% uh, upfront payment by March 31st, 2021. And then the remaining in 10 installments by March 2022. Do you think this has gone well, gone down well with the telecom players and uh, taking the payments into consideration? Uh, do you think Vodafone Idea may need additional support from the government, say, with regards to a moratorium or a deferred spectrum liability? So uh, I think start from other end of the stick, uh, you know, which is uh, that um, I think three players uh, at a minimum are absolutely essential for a good and competitive telecom market and for customers to not get a raw deal. Wherever we've seen duopolies, uh, Philippines is a live example. Uh, the services went down and then the government had to induct, you know, another player into the market to make sure that, uh, you know, the players don't make super normal profits and offer average services to the marketplace. And uh, we will fall into the same trap if we are left with two, you know, a big, 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 uh, you know, risk uh, on that. The customer will get a raw deal is, is my take. So I think it's essential to keep three players alive. And you're right, the third player is so weak right now that without government support and without additional uh, influx of capital, uh, they will find it difficult to sustain themselves. The government might have bailed them out right now, but we have to see how this industry and the third player is kept uh, sustainable uh, uh, you know, forever. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, we'll have a very lopsided market which will be dominated by two players, which is not the ideal structure. Actually, that's where we started from, if you remember. We right. started as a duopoly in every circle. You know, from duopoly, we became an oligopoly with the fourth license. From there, we became a super competition, from a super competition to a hyper competition, and then back to, because all of them folded, it was not viable. That was the wrong structure. So we, we've taken a 360 degree. I think now we have evolved back to an oligopoly, which is a well-proven structure every part of the world. And I think now to get back to a duopoly or a monopoly is absolutely, uh, you know, something that we should shy away from. And I hope uh, the government does enough to keep the third player alive. But eventually, you know, the industry has to help itself by making sure pricing is not compromised and, you know, experience becomes uh, the differentiator between operators. Right. So from here on, if you have to take the next, say, 12 to 18 months into consideration, or in the near term as well, what's the inevitable price hike uh, that should be taken and that probably would be taken by telecom uh, players from here on? Uh, you know, um, um, I would really like to see the Indian market go up to uh, between $8 and $10 on our pool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, can it happen in 18 months? Maybe not. Can it happen in 36 months? Maybe yes. Uh, you know, but uh, you will have to have uh, interim landmarks uh, so that you are confident that you're moving in the right direction. So I think if India over the next, uh, you know, 12 months or so can get to an ARPU, 12, 18 months to get to an ARPU of say 300 rupees, if we get there, then I think we'll be trading on the right path because that will give them confidence to invest more into 5g and the moment they do that then they will know now 3g is not now 300 is not enough now we need 500 once they get 500 they will now you know inch towards maybe 700 rupees i think that's what will happen but if they are stagnant at this 150 for a long time then i'm afraid uh, you know 
it's 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 not a great uh, situation right and then with this ajay what's happening is you need all the peers to come out cumulatively with price hikes however reliance geo is something who's not really ready for a price hike right now in fact in bouts they have been slashing prices does this actually tell you that they are yet to give out a lot of disruption in this space before they get on to the journey of a price hike you know uh, sometimes uh, i get a little surprised when uh, uh, you know some of the people make such like comments to say you know geo if you really ask me hmm. today if there is one player in the market who's ready to play an experience game it should be geo hmm. you know they are well funded they are the only company that makes money hmm. they have only one technology to fend as compared to three technologies that the other two are fending and spending money on and and we know that 2g and 3g is very inefficient compared to 4g so my own take is that if somebody can take away the game uh, from just uh, uh, you know the traditional combat uh, uh, you know to experience it's only geo so uh, you know they are they have all the money to do it they are profitable they are sustainable so who else can do it so you know i i just wish that you know one day the whole geo strategy moves towards complete customer experience and say we are going to charge a premium for that uh, experience uh, you know i think that's when the game will change but you know like i told earlier you can't expect uh, voda idea to do it either airtel will do it or or a geo will do it. Uh, there is not going to be a third guy who has the capacity and the power uh, to play the experience game versus pricing game right and then, but sanjay you know what i would want to play a devil's advocate over here is that with geo they've already started giving the customer a premium experience with this kind of pricing now if you're already playing a game with this sort how do you think will you be able to convert your customer or retain your customers with a higher pricing and premium experience because right now if you're taking their optic fiber immediately they're giving you a set top box which is free of cost so automatically what's happening is my television viewing is already going up so i'm already consuming data on that front i get that experience simultaneously the speed what they're giving me is fabulous and thirdly a telephone connectivity what comes with it so across they're already trying to provide premium services with the least pricing so how do you then you know balance this out so i think uh, i think uh, uh, let's let's uh, peel the onion a little more mm-hmm. uh, there's a wireless part of the business and there's a wired part of the business uh, everywhere in the world when wireless grew the wired grew faster right because um, uh, uh, 200 gb requirement uh one gig speed cannot happen on wireless only wired can do it mm-hmm. and especially if work from home has to become a reality or work from anywhere has to become a reality i think relying on a long term basis on wireless is uh, uh probably a foolhardy you know i think i think that won't work mm-hmm. right uh, you will ultimately need a wide line connectivity to to do it and uh, if you look at the whole wired connectivity in india it's very dismal you know airtel is talking about 2 million plus and jio is talking about 1.5 million what are we talking about we are a 1.4 billion population right and we are serving very little with that premium service that you are saying that's one plus on the other side you know jio had a big advantage over airtel uh, you know for a long time because airtel was still 3g migrating go to 4g there a uh, very efficient spectrum was serving their 2g and 3g but they have started refarming and i think the results are visible uh, if you look at their results over the past few months now they are garnering more incremental customers than jio is you know which is telling you that whatever jio did earlier airtel is now catching up or has caught up on in some cases because they have a um, they have a very solid brand uh, you know and that brand appeals very well to the high end customers probably they have an edge where you know they are now you know in incre- on an incremental basis growing further so now jio which disrupted the market with a 4g technology 
uh, with uh, a voice over uh, IP, which is Volte. Um, they had, uh, you know, video grade, uh, uh, you know, services. I think they now need to move the game to something else, right? And both on the wired and, and wire lines, the wire line penetration needs to go up to make that difference, right? It's just a few million is not going to solve this country's no, problem. No. And wireless on the other side, you know, um, uh, the experience has deteriorated because the amount of spectrum that uh, all these operators have is limited. They've, none of them has got any additional spectrum in the last few years. Now, the fact is that those networks, which had, you know, a, a 10 million customers, 20 million, 50 million, today have 400 million customers. Now, you know, uh, that's uh, that's a shared resource. Radio is all shared. You and I share that resource. Right. You're streaming high definition. I'm streaming high definition on the same side. Our, our, our experience is going to come down if we share with 10 others, right? So the fact of the matter is, I think now, like I said, if you look at Airtel and uh, Geo, they are now combating. They are on even keel, right? And in fact, in, in some, uh, you know, for the past few months, I it seems very clearly that probably Airtel is, uh, you know, incrementally gaining. Now, Geo has to take the game to a next level if they want to stay the market leaders, which I'm sure they must be already thinking, you know, they are a very active company. But Airtel is now active as well because Airtel has now, you know, uh, covered that ground where they were really lacking on 2G, 3G. But don't forget that they still have a very large base of 2G and 3G. And the migration from 2G and 3G is going to each time give them a bump, bump up. I'm sure Geo is wanting those customers to come to them and they must be, you know, fighting hard for that. But every time a 2G and 3G customer moves to 4G for Airtel, Airtel gains, right? Because it gets higher revenues. And for Geo, that's static because everybody is 4G, right? And uh, yes, they have feature phone customers and as they will migrate to smartphone, they will also gain. But I think Airtel has that, that, that advantage and, uh, you know, so I, I guess this game will change. Right. And very lastly, Sanjay, the next step that we're watching out for right now is with regards to TRAI, who's probably looking to launch and introduce the flow pricing in the industry. Yes, there is no proper timeline that is provided by the sector regulator. But what, according to you, should be the base floor pricing, even if they have to do it? You know, it's very difficult to... Uh determine a for floor price uh, made a lot of sense uh, for voice mm. and uh, more often than not uh, it is a ploy that uh, the incumbents have used uh, to stop new entrants to come into the market because new entrants generally come and lower prices and uh, the incumbents don't like that and therefore you know i can tell you when we entered sri lanka uh, you know, dialogue was very successful in putting a floor price there. And that really constrained Airtel's growth over there because a new guy who's still rolling out his network doesn't get the ground to stand on, right? And therefore, you know, it becomes difficult. Uh, but for a market which is now virtually, you know, evenly divided between two players and there's a third player, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, you are basically asking the government to take a call on your behalf to say, how do, how else do we take the prices up? Mm. Up to now, there has been forbearance on price and the industry has always loved it that the regulator has been out of it, mm. right? Uh, it's a double whammy. Once you get the regulator into the price, then to wish him away and get him outside controlling your prices is going to be very difficult. You know, he'll come into the tent, he'll set a price, then every time, you know, you want to raise the prices further, he will come in. Uh, you, you know, then uh, why only a floor, why not a cap, right? He will put a cap as well. And then the fallacy of floor prices that in a market like ours, where we think the floor price will be higher. Uh, uh, and I was saying it's been done actively for voice, but for data without putting in a... Uh, the matrix on experience to put a, a floor price is meaningless according to me you know so i can get uh, i i can give you uh, you know horrible service and i can still walk away with a floor price because Correct. so so that has to be a tandem voice it can't go too bad you know so yeah. so you know you'll probably get away with it mm. or the call will drop but in data the call will not drop the session will not end, but your experience will be very poor, but you'll be paying a, a floor price. 
So I think how will the consumer get protected is what needs to be seen. And without putting putting an experience metrics to give a, a floor price, uh, probably is is not a good idea. And finally, floor price according to me will become the defunct price in the marketplace, right? So um, you know then the pressure on somebody to say you know I'm getting a floor price. Why do I need to improve the service here? You know, and uh, you know everybody has these weak pockets. Uh, uh, in every city, you know, where you you ha you have a network that is chock a block, and therefore your service deteriorates. And with a floor price, even if it deteriorates, you will walk away with the with the floor price. So I think I think it's not good for the consumers. Eventually, is my take. I think operators need to start taking it upon themselves to take mm -hmm. a call to take the price up. And once you get the operator in, believe you me, it's going to cut both ways. He's not going to get out of this. Then you can't wish him away to say. Okay, now things have become good. Now you please don't, uh, you know, interfere in our pricing. Let us do it. I think that won't happen, you know. So I think we, the industry, has been happy keeping the regulator outside, um, you know, the pricing regime. And I think that's the way it should be. But I don't run these businesses anymore. Absolutely, I think it's the industry who needs to raise the bar as well. And there is a great opportunity that lies in front of us as a country with regards to telecom and how we beat all the challenges, overcome all the challenges to make the most of this opportunity is what we need to see as a country, as an industry and from the government perspective. Thank you, Sanjay, so much for joining us on the show. It was a pleasure to have you. Great insights. I hope you enjoyed the conversation as well. Hoping to speak to you soon again. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you. You stay safe too and uh, uh, same for the viewers. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.